bless you, Lord, this morning. We bless you. We praise you. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, we thank you for the music, Lord. We thank you for the minstrel. As we worship you in this place, as we worship you, oh God, and realize that there's nothing, nothing like you in all the earth. Your goodness goes from generation to generation. And may we experience that love, that relationship with you, Lord God, being separated, oh God, from each other, I think right now is a good thing that we learn to trust you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our minds. That we honor you as God, for there is no other God beside you. And Lord, you work everything according to your purpose and according to your will, according to the course of life that you have set for us. I'm so grateful, Father, for the members of life-changing faith. I'm so grateful for those who are praying and have, have developed in their relationship with you is far more important than anything else in life is that we are growing spiritually. And Lord, we don't have to cry about getting closer with you. We are close already through Jesus Christ. We have been given access. We have been given the Holy Spirit. We have been given strength. We have been given wisdom. We have been given revelation. We have been given provision. We have been given health, oh God. And I thank you this morning for the gift of today, the gift of life, the gift of fellowship, the gift of communication, the gift of giving. The gift of praying. I thank you so much, God. And I pray this morning that I not just speak just a word just to preach for 30 or 40 minutes, Lord. Not to just say something just to say something. But Lord, may the anointing from on high, your strength, your power, strengthen me to deliver your word that the souls of the people who are famished, the souls of the people who are maybe fainting will be encouraged and strengthened this morning in the name of Jesus that, Lord, we do not lose hope. We do not lose faith. But Lord, we grab a hold and of thy word, O oh Lord. We grab a hold of our confidence and our faith in you, having been given access to the blood of Jesus Christ, we are made in his righteousness and by his righteousness only and not of good works, not of good deeds. God, we honor you for where we are, even in this life, even in this time. We pray, Lord, for every preacher and pastor, every leader that come on Facebook or YouTube or whatever means of video that they're using that they will preach the gospel truth the gospel message of Jesus Christ I pray for souls to be saved during this time of separation I pray for people to renew their relationship with you during this separation I pray for backsliders to return to the strength to God Almighty that they may receive the inner feeling and the fullness of life and not the emptiness oh God that pervades in so many lives today I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, for the government and for those that are in rulership, that they make the right decisions, God. I pray for truth to come out in the name of Jesus, that we're not just going through panicking, Lord God, but we're listening and we're, we're waiting to hear what does say of the Lord. And if you don't say anything, it's good with me, Lord. I still worship you as God Almighty. So this morning, in Jesus' name, scratch forth your hands, O oh God. Scratch forth your voice, O oh God. Scratch forth your presence and your being this morning, that we may be enveloped in the very presence of God. God and feel confident, oh God, in your word this morning. We thank you. We bless you. We give you praise, oh God. I pray for Gregory Gilbert, a friend of mine who's in a hospital. I pray for uh, Renard Sweetney who's in the hospital, Lord God, and, and I just pray for their health in the name of Jesus. Gregory, don't have corona. Uh, Renard may, Lord, but I just pray your blessings now that you will stretch forth your hands and you are the healer, Lord God. You are the deliverer, Lord God. And we trust in your word. And anybody else online that has anybody sick, Lord God, any
anybody going through, Lord, stretch forth your hands now as we stretch forth our hands, Lord God, and pray in Jesus' name that your healing power will move through their bodies. And Lord, we pray, not our will, but your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Do we bless you and we honor you. We pray for Pastor Adjison and his family on the passing of his mother. We pray, Lord God, on June the 6th, oh God, that they will celebrate, oh God, her homegoing service for such a wonderful woman of God. We lift up the family now. We thank you, Father. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, everybody, to the broadcast this morning. Uh, Life Changing Faith Live streaming. Glad to have you on. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's get into this Word because the Word is our strength. The Bible is what I practice and live by, and I want to bring this Word that God has given me this morning to give you that you, hallelujah, will be blessed by this Word and encouraged in the name of Jesus. So this morning, if if you would have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we are going to read verse 1 through 10. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 10. And I'm so excited about God's word. I believe God's word. I love God's word. <clears throat> it is what keeps me. It is what strengthens me. It what gives me my hope. It, it, it gets me past this pandemic. It gets me past um, things that are transpiring in our world. Even with our government, I rely solely on the word of God to give me the strength to pray for myself, my family, and for you as well, and for your family, that you, God, would keep you safe because it is God that keeps us safe. People stay, say, uh, all, most of the time, say, stay safe. Well, God keeps us safe. It's God that keeps us safe. It God that watches over us. I never want to think that I can do this of my own power and do this of my own ability. Um, it's God that watches me and keeps me. And so I thank him for that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 10, I'm going to read through it. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about the things that the Holy Spirit had released in my heart to release to you this morning that uh, I will give you strength in this time that many are are becoming a little weary because you're at home. There's nothing open. Um, there's not a whole lot of places you can go. And so they're talking about the rise of domestic abuse, the rise of children abuse, the rise of things that are, are happening because people aren't used to being at home. They don't have patience to, to really just sit and to enjoy the company of their family uh, that's around them. So we want to really get you to be encouraged this morning with this word that I'm going to give you in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, Paul states to the Corinthians, he said, it is expedient for me, doubtless to glory. He said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Paul said, I knew a man. He didn't say he was the man. He said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. He said, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one caught up to the third heavens. <clears throat> and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet I myself, I will not glory, he said, but in my infirmities. He said, but for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Number seven, and lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of revelation that is given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times, thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessity, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I want to talk from the subject this morning of when Christ, when God is silent. When God is silent. Many times I have prayed and heard nothing back from God. It seems like it was the most emptiest time in my life when I was going through some events in my life and I would pray and sometimes I would cry and I would weep and I would ask God to deliver me or to provide for me the things that I thought that I really, really needed at the time and I heard nothing. Yesterday when I was praying, God gave me this message when God is silent. Paul said, I sought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. It was not three consecutive times, but it was three times that Paul went to God to remove whatever it was from him. And he heard nothing. Have you ever prayed? Have you ever had a need? Have you ever was in a, in a, in a desire, a, 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 a place where it seems hopeless and you would pray and you would call on God and, and you, would, you, would, you would read scriptures, you would, you would pray with others, and yet it seems that God was silent. It would seem like there was no answer at all from God. The pain that I was feeling, the, the uncomfortableness that I was, I found myself in, and yet I needed God, but I was trying to, to reach God through my flesh. I was trying to reach God through my emotions, and, and no one really taught me a, a, about this, this time of silence. As a Christian, as a believer, there will be times in your life where there will be times of silence when God will not respond the way you you think he should respond whether whether it is ultimately or whether it is through someone many times God will be silent because God is teaching us Paul said I sought the Lord three times three times I sought God about this thing and yet God responded not the way that Paul expect for him to respond and so once, he, once God re did respond to Paul, it wasn't what he wanted to hear. And many times it's not what we want to hear. When God is silent, this is what the Lord told me yesterday. When God is silent, grace is being released. When God is silent, grace is being released. I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Grace is being released when God is silent. It says God is silent. It did not say God wasn't doing anything. God is doing something. God does care about your state. God, God does care where you are. God does care about your pain. God does care about your family. God certainly does care. But we want God to react our way. We want God to respond with an earthquake or we want God to respond with a tornado. When, when God is silent is when grace is being released for the time that it is needed. Paul said in his, in his, in his writings, he said, he said that he uh, 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 met a guy and this guy had told him some things about heaven, about paradise that, that, that he, he really couldn't put into words. He said, and let, I knew these things. I, I received a, 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 an abundance of, 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 re, of revelation. And he said, number seven, unless I shall be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, he said, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. 
He said, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. A messenger of Satan to buffet me means that probably somebody that really aggravated or, 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 or Paul in such a way. And he said, he said that I saw God three times on this thing. And there's times that I have prayed and I asked God and I, I pleaded with God and all I got was silence. I didn't understand that God was working his way. And so what is it when God is silent and he releases his grace? What does that grace look like? What does that grace really looks like in our lives? Have we really come to understand who God is or do we just want God for what he can give us? Or do we just want God for what he can do for us? Or oh, we just want God so he can give us a position or so he can give us power to, 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 to move mountains or to heal sick, heal the sick or, or give us power to cast out devils. Is that all we're after? Is that all that we want? Is that all that this Christian life is about? Is just stuff and doing things? No, it's about relationship because in this relationship of getting closer to God is often in silence. It's often in time of praying and I'm praying and I'm, I'm, I'm making my requests known unto the Lord and, and praying for God to do certain things in the lives of the members of life changing faith, in the lives of my family, in the lives of those that are not saved, in the lives of our government and the president and those that rule in the justice system and police officers in the time that I'm crying out to God. And at the end, and when I when I run out of words to say and I don't have any more words to, to utter out of my mouth and yet silence what is this grace in silence that God pulls on me how do I recognize it how 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 do I deal with it verse 9 look at verse 9 and he said unto me he said he responded to Paul Jesus responded to Paul and he and oftentimes he doesn't respond in the way that we want him to respond. He said, my grace, my grace, Paul, I know what you're going through. I, I know this thing is aggravating. I know it puts you in an uncomfortable place. He said, he said, but I have a reason for it. I, I have a reason for 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 me carrying you this away. I, I know, Paul, you've been shipwrecked. I, I, I know you've been beaten uh, uh, three times with, with more than uh, uh, 40 stripes. I, I, I know you've been thrown into prison. I, I, I know you've been put into dark places. I know you have been sick. But he said, do all of this, my grace. It's sufficient for thee. And he gives him the answer. He says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. We don't understand that. How in the world can my strength be made perfect in weakness? It's outside of your emotions. It's outside of your ability. It is outside of, of what you can do. So the first thing in verse nine I want you to look at is grace in silence produces endurance. It produces the ability to keep doing it, to keep praying, to keep worshiping, to keep developing in God. He said, my strength, God says, my strength, not your strength. He said, my strength is made perfect when you are weak, when you don't have any more strength or ability, no more strength to cry. Remember the story about David when um, uh, his, his people was attacked in Ziglag and, and they took everything and the people talk about stoning David. And the Bible says that the people cried and the people wept because they could weep no more. And they talked about stoning David. And so David couldn't cry anymore. Everything that he, he owned, his wives, his children were taken. He, he had no more strength. And when he was at his weakest moment, he put on the ear pole of the God and he went to the Lord and he said, Father, shall I pursue? And God said, pursue. 
But it was until he realized that his ability and his strength was could not carry him through. And God wanted him to rely totally on him. Until any of us get to that place, we will always struggle with the word of God. We will always struggle trying to develop in our relationship until we get to the point that, that we realize that God is our strength. Your bank account will not sustain you. Your, your, your health cannot be sustained just by eating good, and you should eat good. But he said to Paul, he said, for my strength, my strength, look at it, my strength is sufficient for thee. What God has given you to carry you through is to endure. Number one is to endure. His strength gives us the ability to endure. Endure what? Keep praying. Keep having the right attitude. Keep having the right heart. Keep seeking God. He says, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. When we, when we don't understand God, we will often act in foolishness. We will often start quoting idle words that's not even in the Bible. We will talk like faith don't exist when we don't fully understand and embrace God, grace, when he's silent. God don't talk a whole lot. I don't know all these people talk about God talk all the time. He doesn't. He gave us his word. We should read it. And apply it every day. Number two. Paul said in verse number eight. Going back up to verse number eight. He said for this thing. For this thing. He said. I sought the Lord three times. Three times I sought God. What was God doing in that moment? He was teaching Paul to have patience. We have need of patience. You go out on the street today, you drive your car, people don't have patience. Everybody's driving 100 miles an hour to get nowhere. God was teaching patience in the time of silence. In the time of silence, God releases his grace. His grace for what? Number one, endurance. Number two, patience. I sought God three times. The first time I went to God, nothing. The second time I went to God, nothing. The third time he saw God, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Patience. I sought God, Paul said, three times. How many times we see God? Sometimes one time. We don't have patience. We want to control God. We want to tell God what to do. We are praying, God, please, please, God, please take away the coronavirus. Please, God, take away a, a set of vaccine. God will do it when he's ready. You can't force God. God has a reason for allowing it to be as it is. Many Christian folk were playing church. Many people was just playing until they got a chance to not be at church and, and, not, and not be in the gathering. Uh, Minister Forrest preached a sermon on a, a tradition, how we are so locked into church tradition that it make the word of God of none effect. Your prayer was nothing more than complaining. Your church, your going to church was nothing more than coming out of guilt. You thought you were doing something for God by coming to church. Your reason for coming to church should not be just to gather for a social club, but it should be to come to hear the word of God. And in hearing the word of God, we can go out and we can share our testimony and our lifestyle that will cause others to come to Christ. Remember what the Bible says, let your good be evil. Let your, let, let your good work show. Number three. Grace and silence produces faith. Look what Paul said in verse number nine. He said, and he said unto me, 
My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, God's strength. See, you need God's strength. Your stimulus check already been spent. There are people that's not even paying their rent because the government said you can't be put out. When this is all over, there's going to be a catastrophic suits all over the place because people aren't using the wisdom of God. You need to get closer to God, not your strength, but his strength. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for in my weakness, for, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul responds. Look how Paul responds. Building faith through infirmities, sicknesses, difficult times. Listen. He said, most gladly, therefore, he said, I would rather glory in my sicknesses. Infirmities means sicknesses in what I'm in. He said, I rather glory now. I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? He said, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Glory be to God. He said, oh, he said thank you for this revelation. He said, thank you for this understanding. He said, that I glory in. In my sicknesses, he said, where you have, I don't understand it. I, I don't know why I'm here, but, but, I, but I know that, that you haven't said anything to me. But I realize now that grace is being poured out in your silence. He said that my power, that the power of Christ, what is the power of Christ? The power of Christ. I'm not talking about casting out devils. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about words of knowledge. What is the power of Christ? Here is the power of Christ to live holy. What is the power of Christ to overcome temptation? What is the power? What is the power of Christ? It is not those things that you see as physical. It's those things that are that are that are that are, that are, are, are not are, are seen with the eye. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into a captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So number one, grace and silence produces endurance. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Number two, patience. I sought God three times. God wants us to develop in our patience. Without patience, you would never hear God. You would never receive the word of God in your spirit without patience. Because when there's no, when you don't have patience, there's anxiety. There is fear. You will always move according to the flesh. When you don't have patience, you have been so stubborn and I have been so stubborn wanting God to do things on our timetable when we want them done. Well, guess what? God doesn't move on your timetable and he doesn't move on minds. So number one, endurance. Number two, patience. Number three, faith. I will glory in my Infirmities. I will glory in my sickness. Why? Because your, my, my, my strength. He said, because my strength is made perfect in weakness. Number four. <clears throat> Number 10. Go to verse 10. He said, therefore, Paul said, therefore, I take pleasures in my sicknesses. He said, in reproaches, in necessity, needs. In persecutions, whoa. In distress, for what? For Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, Paul said, I'm, I'm strong. He then goes back and he, he rehearses what Christ said. He gets it. He gets it. The question is, do you get it? Trust. I take pleasure in my infirmities or what I go through for Christ's sake. Why do I take pleasure? Because I know God's going to bring me out. I know God's going to heal me. I know God's going to set me free. But how do I get to this place? In silence. Grace is pulled out in silence. When you have no more strength, when you have nothing else to rely on but God, why do you have to get to that place? Why do you have to get to that place but God? Why? 
because you don't have endurance. You don't have pace, patience. You're not operating by faith and you don't trust the word. And so you have to go through these things so you can develop, develop. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it don't feel good. I know you want me to give you a message and say everything going to be right. Paul tells us we go through things because it is part of God perfecting us for his glory. So number one, endurance. Number two, this grace and silence produces faith, patience. Number three, it produces faith. Number four, it produces trust. I take pleasure in my infirmities, Paul said, in reproaches, in necessity, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. He said, I'm realizing for when my abilities and, and, and my resources run out, he said, for when I'm weak, then am I strong when I rely totally on God, but I don't want to get to the to the point where I have to go through all that. Why don't we just go to step number one and just say, OK, I'm not relying on that. I'm not relying on family. I'm not relying on friends. I'm not relying on that. I'm going to rely on God's wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. <sighs> number five. Verse 10 to confidence. See, when you begin to rely on God through endurance, patience, faith, trust, you build confidence. For Paul was able to say with full authority, he said, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. Where did he get that from? He got that from Jesus Christ. Jesus told him, he said, my, for my strength in the ninth verse is made perfect in weakness. <clears throat> outside of my resources and my ability, and I build confidence in God. Have you ever been in a situation and you knew that God got you out of it? Have you ever been sick and knew that God healed you? Have you ever had need and realized that, that you didn't tell anybody and yet God provided? Confidence. Don't lose your confidence in God. Through this pandemic, don't let your silence cause you to not have confidence in God's word. There are many people that are falling by the wayside because they're crying out and they're pleading with God. And, and I, this one pastor, his son had, had contracted coronavirus and he came on his YouTube streaming video and he was crying out. He was just crying out as a father cries out for his son. And he pleaded with God. He pleaded with God, plead it with God. Please don't let my son die. Please don't let my son die. And the son died. He died. Who knows best? You or God? I don't always understand God's ways. I don't understand all the time of what God does. But through my journey of this walk with God, I, I still have confidence in the word, even when it doesn't work out the way that I want it to work out, even when it don't happen the way that I want it to happen. And God carries me through things. I have learned to build confidence in God. I have learned that I don't pick up the thing that makes me strong, which is my own ability or my resources. I fall on my face. And I go to the one who can really help me. So number one, grace in silence pulls out endurance, produces patience, faith, trust, confidence. This grace in silence also produces an avenue to prayer. You can tell people about your problems. You can tell people about your situation. You can tell people about your need for money or your need for food. And that is only a temporary fix. But when you can go to God for yourself and you don't tell anybody about your situation, you don't tell anybody what you're going through and you fall on your face and you talk to your God. 
That's when you're at your weakest moment. That's when you're at your most brokenest moment. It's when you realize there's nothing in this world that can fix you. There's nothing in this world that can fix what's on the inside of you. There's nothing in this world that can satisfy you without God. And you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled every day. Ask God, give you a fresh feeling, a fresh anointing. Don't take this day for granted that you woke up and you're just going through life. Let me tell you something. Life is short. So it produces one grace in silence. He pulls out grace in silence, produces what? Endurance. Number two, patience. Number three, faith. Number four, trust. Number five, confidence. Number six, Prayer, a prayer. Prayer shows humbleness. It, re, it requires humbleness and with a right heart. Not based on your strength, not based on your knowledge of scripture, not based on your giving, not based on your title. When we go to God, we come to God broken. We come to God humble, relying on his strength, relying on his wisdom, relying on his understanding, relying on his revelation. The power of God, the power of God operating in a believer's life is not casting out devils only. It is not healing the sick. It is, it is not uh, doing miracles. The power of God is to live holy and give God the glory and righteous living in this present evil world. That is power. Power is when you can overcome your own flesh. Power is when you can overcome your own selfishness. Power is when you can un overcome unforgiveness. Power is when you can overcome a failure in life. Power is when you can overcome your past that sometimes cause you to go to a mental place of abuse and, and, and to rehearse it over and over again. Power to have received the peace of God even though this thing may have happened. Power. That's real power. Real power is to live holy and righteous in this present evil world. Number seven, this grace in silence produces relationship on a whole new level. The relationship that we have with God is not like a relationship we have with a mama, your mama or your daddy or your friends, or your siblings, or your wife, or your children. This relationship with God ex exceeds that. It's way beyond a human relationship. And you cannot have this relationship based on your emotions and your flesh. It cannot be based on your philosophy or what you think is right. But this relationship is based on a spirit. It says in John 4, 24, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. This relationship far exceeds the human relationship of life. And you can never learn it. You can never get it. When you're strong. When your bank account is full, you rely on it. You sit back, you got money in the bank, there's no need. When your health is good, you eat anything you want, you do what you want. When your mental state is good, you don't think on the things of God. You don't even pick your Bible up. But when things go wrong and reproaches come and pandemics like this show us who we really are and do we really have a relationship with Christ Jesus. I'm going to give you these again. Seven things that grace and silence produces in a believer that seeks God, honors God. He don't understand it. She don't understand it all the time. But wherever we are, we're going to have to learn to thank God in where we are, like Paul. We got to learn to worship God in our infirmities and our lack. He's still God. He don't change. But as long as you have strength and your ability, God can't do anything. So what does it do? Number one, endurance. 
This grace and silence produces what? It's being released. What? Endurance, patience, faith, trust, confidence, prayer, and relationship beyond a human relationship. I want you to get this today. I don't want you to fall by the wayside. What's going on in your life, whatever's happening, wherever your health is, start worshiping God. Don't start worshiping God. I know you want it done. I know you want it over. I know you want it out of it. I know you want financial relief. I know you want to go back to work. I know you want to be able to see people. But that's what? Let's trust God over our emotions, over our feelings, over what we want. And let's see what God is doing. But it takes endurance. It takes patience. It takes faith. It takes trust. It takes confidence. It takes prayer that develops this relationship like no other. As I was praying and praying for just the world, churches, pastors, people who have lost loved ones, praying for our servicemen, all those out there that served in the service, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank God for freedom in America. Thank you, God, for freedom in America. So when I was praying, this is what God said to me. Because I started thinking about where I was. And I remember when I was 19 years old, I did something stupid. And I got arrested. And I was put in jail. And I was in college at the time. And um, I had a court date. I was in jail. I was handcuffed. I was shackled like a slave and rightly so for the crime that I committed. And what happened was I went before the judge and the attorney told me I was looking at five to 15 years in prison. And when I stood before the judge, his name was Jacob S. Levine. And the courthouse at that time was over on St. Barnabas Road. And I stood before that judge, and that judge wiped out everything that I did. They had proof that I was guilty. They had proof that I deserved to go to prison. But God moved on the judge's heart, and the judge let me go. He gave me uh, 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 told me uh, that he never wanted to see me there again, but he felt in his heart there was something good in me. I couldn't see it at the time. And God reminded me that that day changed the course of my life. That day, if I would have went to prison, I would probably not be standing here today. If I would have went to prison, I would not have, have been used to affect some of the families and people that I have been able to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ, an example of being a man of God. On that day, God reminded me of who I am. He reminded me that he has his hand upon me. He reminded me that he called me for one thing and one thing only, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in truth and faith and confidence and to learn to endure, learn to have patience, learn to walk by faith, learn to trust him, learn to have confidence, and God knows I have learned how to pray. And God said this to me, as I was praying, he said, life is like a match. It is only lit for a little while. It is lit to do what it was lit for. That's what he said. I'm going to say it again. God said, life is like a match. It is only lit for a little while. It is lit to do what it was lit for. The question is, what are you lit for? Paul said, I'd rather die than not to do the things of Christ. He said, I, 
I, I, I, I walk in foolishness for the sake of Christ. I'd rather be embarrassed. I'd rather be talked about. As long as I know I'm walking in truth, I'm good being attacked. I'm good in reproaches. I'm good when things don't work out. I'm good when I don't understand. Why? Because I've learned that grace is poured out in silence. Last verse, and we're going to close out with this. Go to Galatians. Go over one book. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. When God is silent and you have not received an answer, he's pouring out grace to carry you through. Grace through death. Grace through sickness. Grace through necessity. Grace when you don't understand. And when his grace is poured out, what is it producing? Endurance, patience, faith, trust. Confidence that then produces prayer and a relationship with Christ like no other. So Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not, come on now, let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't, don't get weary on God because grace is being poured out on you. His presence is there. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You got to know that. You got to stick with that. For in due season, ho, 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 ho. I'm going to end with this. In due season, what does that mean? In God's time, not your time, not my time. In God's time, he allows things, guess what? He allows things to produce in you things that will glorify him. The power to overcome sin, the power to talk right, the power to live right, that's real power. That's real power. For in due season, listen, we shall, that's a promise, we shall reap. We shall reap the benefits of living holy. We shall reap the benefits of going through these trials and temptations and sicknesses and still honoring God. We shall reap. And the only reason you don't reap, he said, if you faint not, if you don't, don't stop trusting. Don't stop believing. Don't lose your confidence in God. Whatever you do, maintain your confidence in God's word. He's pouring out grace, grace to get you through, grace to develop you. And he's given us power, power to trust him, power to, to know that God worked everything according to his counsel and purpose. Whatever God has allowed, he has allowed it for your good. He has allowed it to strengthen you. He has allowed it to bring you out. Our God loves us so much. So I want to encourage you in these next few days and weeks coming forth. Don't be so anxious to get out. Don't be so anxious to return back to what you do. No, we're not going back there. We're going to come out of this loving, changed, faithful, concerned about the lives of those who aren't saved. So if you're not saved and you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you can enjoy the benefits of the word of God and the peace of God that passes all understanding. And the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, thou shalt be saved. And if you are saved and you have walked away from the principles of the power of God, the power to live right, the power to stand, the power to, to live holy, he said, I, I, my arms are open. God says, my arms are open. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sin. Ask God to come back in your heart. You don't need to be in a church for God to do that. You can be anywhere, even home watching on this broadcast. Put forth your hands now if that's you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that person who's stretching forth their hands. And I'm asking you to strengthen them. I'm asking you to forgive them. I'm asking you, God, to receive them back into the kingdom of God. 
Repeat after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of not trusting you. I ask you to come into my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. I confess with my mouth that you were born of a virgin. I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again and are now sitting on the right hand of God, making intercession for me. Come in my heart and save me. And if you're a backslider, Father, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for turning away from you. Teach me more of thy word, God, that I may humble myself. God, forgive me. I confess my sins before thee and thee only do I trust. In Jesus' name. If you've done that, please leave a comment down below. We would like to get in contact with you. Amen. We have some wonderful ministers, elders, and preachers. Amen. Good people of God that's concerned about your soul and where you're going to spend eternity. So thank you for tuning in to Life Changing Faith Christian Broadcast this morning. We are so grateful that you joined with us and pray that the words you heard encourage you today, strengthen you today, and keep you in Jesus' name. Have a blessed Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't forget to support Life Change of Faith Christian Church through the uh, Cash App, or you can send it in through our address on the, on the screen, 3235 Swan Road, Suitland, Maryland. We would, we would definitely appreciate your giving. And I want to thank all of the Life Change of Faith members who are still supporting the church, even though you're away. Blessings upon you. And also, if they open up the churches, we're not going to open up until I meet with my ministers, my uh, deaconess, my elder, and myself to discuss and to pray and to hear from God of how we should come back and if we come back. But we're going to trust God through this and let God lead us that we're doing what's right and according to his timetable. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for joining us.